Well, good evening. Welcome. My name is Gary, at ham radio call sign W4EEY, Whiskey 4 Echo Echo Yankee. And I'm uh, here to welcome you uh, on YouTube uh, to uh, an amateur radio class. This is a general class uh, upgrade course, uh, which we'll teach over the next uh, 10 weeks. Uh, very happy to have uh, anyone uh, watching on YouTube uh, uh, with us. And we have, at the moment, 26 people in our virtual classroom. Uh, so very, very happy to, to have this participation uh, this evening. Uh, I'm here with my uh, colleague uh, Dave, uh, KE4EA, who's back uh, behind me. Uh, and uh, Doug is uh, switching for us tonight, so it's the three of us here in the little control room. And uh, uh, we're going to get started here in just a second. Um, Doug, if you would go ahead and go for the PowerPoint. Thank you. So this is the introductory class, um, and uh, we uh, uh, call it Chapter 1. Um, but um, when I'm talking about chapters and whatnot, I guess I should make this uh, clear. Doug, back to me, please. This is the book uh, that we will be using, the American Radio Relay League's General Class License Manual, the ninth edition. The ninth edition is the current edition. Um, you could get an earlier book, but the problem is that the um, question pool, uh, that uh, the questions and answers that we'll be covering, you want the current one. You want the one with the, the current questions. So um, chapter one in the book is an introduction, and so that's why we're doing uh, introductions tonight. Um, and we will uh, come back here next Tuesday evening, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time for Chapter 2. All right, Doug, we can go back to the PowerPoint. Thank you for that. So this is the introduction. Um, wake up my mouse here. Um, for those of you on YouTube, already the, the folks in the Zoom classroom uh, are getting uh, emails from me. But if you'd like to get more information about this class via email each week, uh, just send me an email, w4eey at arrl.net, uh, and say, hey, I'd like to be on the uh, YouTube mailing list for the general class. And we'll uh, put you right on there, and you'll get all of the information uh, that the folks uh, in the classroom uh, would get as well. So we don't want to leave you behind. So uh, let's uh, start with some introductions. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Um, then I'll uh, turn it over to uh, Dave, uh, who uh, can uh, tell you a little bit about his background. And then, uh, if you're willing, uh, I'd like to go down a list here, and uh, 28 people in the classroom right now, that's cool. Um, and uh, here, just a, a brief uh, uh, statement from you all as to your name and, and where you are and why you uh, want to participate in the class. So um, I have been a ham since... 1969, although not continuously. Um, I was first licensed as Whiskey November 8 Gulf Alpha Juliet, WN8GAJ, uh, in my hometown of Midland, Michigan, uh, back many moons ago. That was a novice license, the WN8, the N meant it was a novice license. I could only uh, transmit Morse code, but I had a heck of a lot of fun uh, and uh, made contacts all around the United States. But that was also the time of junior high school and high school, and other things got in the way, so I let the license lapse. Well, fast forward many years after getting a degree in broadcasting from Central Michigan University, I was working at a TV station in Saginaw, Michigan, and the other engineers on staff were hams, and they said, Gary, you should go back and get your ham license. Good idea. So I uh, studied, 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 uh, went to the Red Cross building and uh, took a test, uh, walked in with no license, walked out with an advanced class license. So, but I, I had a lot of help because I had electronics classes in high school. Uh, I had um, you know, the engineering background, so uh, that, that helped me a great deal. So um, maybe a little easier for me than for some folks. So uh, continuously licensed since the mid-1980s. So, um, been around the block a little bit, um, worked in, in commercial and, and public broadcasting, and then I worked for the Voice of America, uh, the U.S. government's international shortwave broadcaster um, and, and other um, venues as well. I uh, worked for them for 20 years overseas primarily, 
Uh, and I had my license overseas in various countries, so I was licensed with the foreign call signs as well. Um, but working for Voice of America was very much like working uh, in ham radio. I mean, it's a transmitter, it's an antenna, and uh, you're emitting radio frequency energy. So um, it, it served me well uh, as a career. So uh, teaching the classes here is my way of uh, trying to give back uh, to the hobby that I love. You'll hear a lot more about me as, as the class goes along, but uh, really glad to have you here. All right, Dave, over to you, please. Right. Well, it's uh, great, great to be here. I think this is the fourth time we've taught the general and the second time with the current question pool. So uh, hopefully we've uh, got all the bugs out. You've, you'll be the beneficiary of all of our prior mistakes. I got started in the late 60s as a teenager with in ham radio as a novice. Back then you had to pass a five word per minute code test. And over the next couple of years, I uh, it went to the general and then to the advanced. And then, as they say, uh, life happened. <laughs> um, got married, raised a family, and kind of dropped out of ham radio. So I, it was expired for, for a number of years. Uh, worked for Motorola for 30 years and put in probably the first 25 or 30 cellular systems all across the United States, doing the infrastructure and, and the uh, commissioning of those systems. So that, that was a fascinating career. Uh, we've been in Greenville, uh, South Carolina for about the last 15 years or so. I worked for a university electronics department and then Kemet Electronics is where I finished up my career. I've been retired for about three years now and am enjoying that very much. So it <laughs> gives a lot more time for ham radio. So uh, I got my license back in 2016. Um, I'd been out of it for quite a while and I didn't even know that the code requirement was gone at, at the time. So I tested right up to extra at the time and uh, been very active ever since that time. Then I got this really strange uh, text message from Gary in December of 2016. So it said, uh, Dave, I want to talk to you, to you about something. And he was wondering if, we, uh, if I wanted to help with uh, doing an extra class and Gary and I had never taught the extra class before, uh, so why why go through the technician or the general, jump right into the deep end? <laughs> so that's what we did, and in January of uh, 2017, we, we taught the first extra. So that was a little rough, but it, it went well. It went really well. So uh, most of my background operating lately has been in digital. I've done a lot of FT8, I've also become active in summits on the air, I've done quite a bit of chasing and a little bit of activating there. It's a very fun part of the hobby. And as, in terms of personal motivation, I really like helping others do things that they didn't think that they'd be able to do. Uh, for example, getting through chapter four in this study, <laughs> and we'll, we'll definitely do that. But that's, that's what really turns me on about doing these classes, and I'm um, very happy to be here with you. Super Dave, thanks so much. All right, now probably the most exciting part of the entire broadcast tonight uh, is we get to hear from you. And so let me call on you. Um, I have a list over here of participants and I'm gonna go down the list, uh, try not to miss anybody. Um, but uh, please uh, tell us your name, um, where you are, um, and uh, uh, what you'd like to, to do uh, when you upgrade uh, to general. So we're gonna start with Ben Furlong, ki 5 MJT, go ahead. Uh, welcome everyone, hope my audio is working well. Um, all right, good. My name is Ben Furlong, I'm 24 years old. Uh, you know, I'm definitely quite an old, old person, you'll find, uh, find out that about me, but I uh, originally was from Charlotte, North Carolina, graduated with a degree in mechanical engineering from UNCC at the end of 2018, but I'm now here in Jackson, Mississippi. Um, I got my technician's license uh, last year in December, and uh, after that, you know, you can, of course, take the general for uh, three, and I m didn't pass by one question, and I uh, was not going not gonna to let my, uh, you know, spirits beat you down about that, um, but uh, that's part of the reason to learn, and the other reason was also, you know, have access to some of those uh, sweet high-frequency uh, bands. Um, can't build a tower right now, but eventually I'd like to be able to communicate, um, you know, long distance. Um, and that is pretty much it. Uh, I've got an Intel 878 UV+, Plus, uh, so I hopped straight into D DMRs and also Echolink. Uh, both are fantastic. 
and Ben was asking me some questions about uh, digital radio and I'm a newbie <laughs> in digital radio so uh, you may actually find more information from uh, participants here in the class so all right thank you Ben uh, Linda KG4 ALW you're up next go ahead and unmute Yep, still muted. Hey, can you hear me? Now we can hear you, yeah. Okay, great, great. Um, Linda, KG4ALW, how, how is everybody tonight? Hope you're well. Um, I'm actually taking the general because I want to be able to transmit and receive long distance. Um, I've been a ham operator for about, actually probably about 20 years now, but lost track of it about 15 years ago when I changed careers. I used to work for a company out in Asheville with uh, the two-way radio community and uh, work with um, Motorola and Kenwood radios and Vertex Yezu repeaters and antennas and all that cool stuff. And I love electronics and um, I'm kind of a, geek, a geeky girl when it comes to tearing radios apart and looking at stuff inside. <laughs> so um, just wanted to get back into the realm of the electronics world and meet some really, really good people and learn how to do a CW or Morse code again um, and build my first ham shack and antenna system at my house here. So that's basically my goals. Wonderful, Linda. Excellent. Well, uh, great to have you along. Uh, now we're going to move on to, um, it's indicated as Al L. Um, so Al L, come on in. Yeah, my name is Al. Um... I had some RF experience in the Air Force, Intel Intercept. Um, I took Gary's YouTube class, the 2018, and then uh, the Dece December 2020. And uh, I'm scoring 90s on the practice exams, so I figured I had the opportunity to take this one live. So I think I'm going to try to take both tests at the same time. So thank you. Very good. Thank you, Al. And uh, Angela, KC1OSM, come on in. Hello, good evening, Angela. Um, <clears throat> hello, I'm, I'm, I live in Massachusetts. Um, I'm a newbie, newbie. I just received my technician license last month. Um, so it's a, a, a new venture hobby for me. Um, and I would like to... Um, get access to the high frequency band as well as help out in the um, emergency services area in my local town. Excellent. We'll talk a little bit about that, but yeah, that's a that's a great reason. All right, Ben Parrish, Kilo Oscar for Juliet Zulu Hotel. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Ben. I just became a uh, technician in December. I sat through uh, Gary's class and it was a, a great experience and figured I why not get, keep a good thing going so um, so my goal definitely with the general is to work in HF my first exposure to ham radio back in the 89 time frame was in when I was still in school one of the instructors had a ham shack set up at school and I fell out of it for whatever reason and uh, wanted to get back into it, especially considering that uh, one of the groups I volunteer with at work, I uh, work in the telecommunications industry, we uh, get deployed occasionally out to disaster areas to help restore communications. So I was kind of like one of the lone guys out that didn't have any certifications or uh, didn't have a ticket. So uh, I, I'm correcting that and figure I'm going to go above and beyond if I, if I can. So glad to be here. Wonderful, Ben. Glad to have you here. And yeah, you'll discover that after the class is over, you'll wonder what to do on Tuesday nights. <laughs> it becomes a habit. All right, now over to a guy who I'm not sure why you're in this class, Bill, but we're gonna we're gonna welcome you anyway. Bill Whalen from Chicago, please come on in. <laughs> yes, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Bill Whelan, and I live in Chicago by the sea, so to speak. Uh, I've been involved in amateur radio for most of my life. I got my first novice license in 1960, if we can believe that. So I must be over 100 now. And uh, had the very fortunate experience of working with a lot of people at Motorola for 30 years or so, surrounded by engineers. And uh, I was a consultant for Motorola, so I got to travel the world and go to a lot of exotic and interesting places and meet a lot of wonderful people. Uh, a few weeks ago, I had a wonderful experience of getting back into radio and uh, 
enrolled in Gary's course for the extra, which I just completed, so I'm ready to take that exam. But I thought I would backpedal a little bit because I've been away from radio, which seems to be a trend here among us for a, a number of years when life got in the way. So, uh, so I, I, I wanted to go back and, and relearn the general specifics and, and go deeper into the science. What it's doing is encouraging me to read uh, on these various topics, because as you'll soon learn, the course takes you in about an inch and you'd like to go in about a mile or you need to go in about a mile. So, uh, so I'm back to continue my learning, thanks to these two gentlemen. And you're, you're in good hands, let me say that to you, to all of my fellow participants. Well, thank you, Bill. And yes, um, the nature of the course is that we have to have a focus on the uh, test questions. Um, so we're, this is not a comprehensive electronics class because we just don't have the time. Um, but uh, we'll give you all of the information you need to get your upgrade. That's the whole purpose of the class. All right, uh, Daniel Lewis, you're up next. Please unmute yourself and come on in. Hello, um, call sign is K-E-8-B-H-X. I'm taking this class because uh, I just, uh, I'm finding, I'm kind of running on dead ends here on things that I've been doing. I got a big collection of VHF, UHF stuff. Uh, I want to get into the HF. Uh, I built a 20 meter Biddix radio, uh, so I'm anxious to get, instead of just listening, I'm anxious to get to use it. But really, uh, yeah, I'm just just here to learn. I live here in New Carlisle, Ohio. Electronics was my hobby, and things just kind of progressed with my 3D printer and electronics and everything, and I started building antennas and radios and uh, printing out everything I needed uh, for the cases and stuff, and so I've been uh, I've been enjoying it. It just seems like there's just a million things to learn and a million places to go. So, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to learn more. Super. Well, thank you, Daniel. Appreciate it. And now, Daniel, what was your call sign? Kilo Echo Eight, Papa Hotel X-ray. Thanks very much. All right, so now over to uh, David, a Kilo Oscar for Lima Delta Sierra. Good evening, Gary. This is, my name is Dave, last name is Slobodnik. I was going to say, I started out in ham radio probably 55 or so years ago, never finished. And I actually started four times, but the fifth time was a charm. Started taking the class last fall. Uh, here with Gary, learned a tremendous amount, and finally became licensed when I could take the exam back in January. So anyway, I'm I'm looking forward to uh, the next level, which is general. I keep finding out we can do a lot more, which is kind of interesting. And I, my interests lie really in emergency communications. I've made application to my local ARES um, organization. I'm interested in long distance communication. And at, I'd like to get back into CW. I started CW a long time ago and actually was was pretty good at, at code, uh, almost 10, 10 words per minute. And hopefully those skills will come back and I can uh, start all over on that again. So super. that's that. Thank you, David, appreciate it very much. Uh, Dwayne Oliver, Kilo Oscar for Lima X-Ray Foxtrot. Hey, it's Dwayne. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Just checking. Okay, awesome. So uh, I have been wanting to do this for a while. My background is Navy Electronics. Um, I kind of want to have been doing this for a while. And uh, back in January, I ended up uh, pulling my back kind of bad. I was on my back for about a week and a half. And I started looking through YouTube and found Gary's channel uh, where he had just wrapped up the uh, December course for the uh, technician. And uh, I recognized a handful of the faces on the screen because they were all over those uh, YouTube videos. So anyway, um, studied that, um, watched the videos for the week and uh, studied it. And a week later, I went and took the technician class. So I don't really have any goals or aspirations as far as what I've heard a lot of the other people say in here, just learning and seeing if I want to go anywhere with it. And, uh, you know, with with HF and, and all the other stuff that comes with it. So just learning. That's it. 
Thanks, Dwayne. You'll, you'll find something in here that'll tickle your fancy. <laughs> Absolutely. I can guarantee it. All right, Ed, KD2VBX, please come on down. Oh, John. Hey, Gary. Good to see you again. Um, I uh, ended up getting my license last fall after your class. I set up my shack, having some fun doing some VHF, and uh, joined a few groups here in the Rochester area in New York. And, uh, you know, I just kind of want to round things out and get my uh, general and do some HF. So, you know, nothing specific beyond that. But I, uh, I listen a lot on the 80 meter, 40 meter, and I'm like, oh, man, I wish I could join in some of these calls. Because from Rochester with a little dipole up on my hill, I'm, I'm hearing San Francisco, Arizona, Texas, just like you're sitting in my backyard. So I'm curious if they can hear me. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. Excellent. Oh, Katie. Yeah, KD2VBX. There we go. Fine. Thank you, Ed. Um, Gary Pisick, come on in. Go ahead and unmute yourself. I think that's Gary Pisick. Indicated as Gary. Except I don't see his video. All right, we might have to come back to my namesake. All right, so my friend, also from uh, upstate New York, Jackie, please come on in. Go ahead and unmute yourself. That pesky unmute button. We found it earlier. Now... All right, Jackie, we're going to come back to you. How about that? All right, my, my good friend from uh, the upstate of South Carolina, Jeff Parker. Jeff, come on in. Hey, Gary. Uh, yeah, I'm Jeff Parker. I live uh, down in Pelzer, South Carolina. Uh, in Gary's last class, got licensed back uh, late November of last year, um, KF4JQX. Uh, yeah, I've been interested in ham since I finished high school in 1982. My, um, one of my high school instructors was a, was a ham operator, and um, had a lot of interest, interest in it ever since then. Um, I'm disabled. I'm a cancer patient, and I still take chemo every month, probably the rest of my life. But uh, I have a lot of time on my hands, and... Um, it gives me a lot. It gives me something to do on um, the days that I don't really feel good. But uh, you know, I, I'm interested in you know uh, talking long distance also and getting involved with some emergency management stuff uh, and just enjoy talking to people. Uh, and other than that, you know, I enjoy messing with radio equipment and you know building antennas and stuff like that also. And uh, other than that, it's just a great hobby, you know. Just have a lot of fun with it. Super. Well, glad to have you aboard, Jeff, and uh, we'll uh, get you going to the next step. All right. Uh, I think we get a twofer on the next one. Uh, Karen E., how do you pronounce your last name? Oh, it's you're pointing at him. Well, hit the unmute and introduce yourselves, please. There you go. Okay. I'm Ted Ekus. Uh, Kilo Victor Four Whiskey Alpha Tango, and this is my wife. I'm, I'm Karen, <laughs> and she's got a call sign too. But Kilo Four Kilo Bravo Echo, and uh, we got uh, we got our technician licenses in uh, 2015, and uh, set up a little two meter shack. Haven't been able to get the 10 meter to work. Probably because of my antennas. <laughs> um, interested in antenna building and just generally wanted to um, have more access to frequencies and um, get into it a little more, be able to talk to people a little further away than Anderson and Greenwood. And um, don't really have any really noble things that I want to do. I just want to get the license. Very good. Well, glad to have you both along. And uh, yeah, and, and 10 thanks. meters does open up, especially when there's a contest going on. Um, the uh, 
American Radio Relay League single sideband DX, DX contest was this last weekend. And uh, 10 meters did open up for us, especially down to South America. So, um, yep, good. Ted, what was your call? What were your call letters? Ted? Hello, Victor 4, Whiskey Alpha Tango. R repeat. Uh, KV4, W A Z. I got an animal here. Thank you very much. We're barking up the right tree, I can see. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. And um, now let's move on to uh, is it pronounced Ivis? K Kilo Oscar for Mike Whiskey Yankee. Got to find that pesky unmute button. There you go. It's, it's Larry Vess. I just shortened oh. it to L. L. To L Vess. <laughs> it's Larry. I, geez, I didn't see you. Okay, that's better. It's Larry Vess. I just shortened it to L Vess. It's not for the king, of course. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I used to have a motorcycle, Road King, that had the uh, Vanity Lights last license on an L Vess, you know. Anyway, uh, I'm up here in Greenville, South Greenville County, South Carolina, uh, Simpsonville. Uh, I got my technician license last month, the 20th. Uh, met Dave. Uh, watched the uh, vids on uh, YouTube uh, that Gary did, and uh, promptly went and passed my test. I'm just not too proud of how I passed it, but I passed it. Like Gary said, a doctor that finishes in the last of the class, they still call him a doctor. <laughs> but, you know, I'm looking to uh, expand my horizons on uh, the bands. Uh, and I'm just a pup in the woods on this. Uh, I think I did it backwards from what Dave and Gary did it. I had a career. Uh, mailman soldier <laughs> if you want a soldier mailman uh then i'm looking for a new hobby so this is it wonderful well larry what is at bill i'm, I'm sorry bill i'm going to ask you to stop um interrupting uh, with the, the call signs we can do that um uh by email well, we want to get through tonight okay it's kind Ten of four. Ten four. i just didn't get his i just didn't get, his name, just get it, didn't get his name because of the confusion in the beginning Okay, that's La it, it's Larry. So, okay. Larry Vess. Yep. So, yep. Just, yep. Thanks, Bill. Appreciate it so much. All right. So, nope. now, Mary, another one of my former in person students, Kilo Oscar for Alpha Charlie Delta. Oh, and she's frozen. Good evening. Oh, there uh, you are. Yeah. Mike Holtzman. Oh, have you got me? Uh, yeah, your your internet connection might be a little uh, sketchy. You might turn your camera off uh, so that then you all the bandwidth goes to audio. Okay. AT and T is that better? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Mary. Any better? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm in Greenville, South Carolina. Um, I was in the Navy for 20 years and retired back in 1994, and I was in telecommunications, and I absolutely love HF. So I have to get my general license in order to play with things I want to play with, and my husband just recently got his extra license, so I'm kind of competing with him as well. <laughs> That's it. Back to you, Gary. Thanks, Mary. And uh, yeah, yeah um, you might want to look into um, your internet connections. Uh, having a wired connection is always the best, uh, or really fast Wi-Fi can work. But um, uh, that will uh, help you uh, as we go through the class to make sure you don't miss out on anything or we don't miss out on anything from you. All right, uh, Paul Rendazzo, come on in. Hello, everyone. Uh, I was in Gary's... Uh technician class it was a great class really enjoyed that um and i am looking forward to passing this course taking the exam the, the technician class was great i expect this one to be really pretty much the same um and i just want to learn more about high frequency and, and be able to be a user in it 
That's about it. Excellent, Paul. Thank you. Ricky G, come on in. Hey, my name is Ricky Gibbons. I uh, also took Gary's technician class last fall. Uh, but after I signed up for this class, I, I guess I got a little impatient, took the technician test before the class and passed. Uh, but went ahead and continued with the, cl with the uh, class. Um, kind of it, like others, this is a new hobby for me. Uh, kind of got interested in it when I was found myself in a situation where I had no communications. And I'm thinking, what other way can I communicate? If something ha happened to happen, something my cell phone and the people I was with didn't have cell service neither. And looked into it and looked into it and came across this. Other thing I was kind of interested in too is uh, flying uh, drones. And I understand there's an advantage to having this license from flying drones. So that also interests me as well. I asked Gary, what's my next step as far as uh, before getting a uh, radio? And he said, well, take the general class. So, I'm taking the general class, and after I take the general class, I'm looking forward to buying my first radio. Excellent. Ricky, great to have you with us. Another old friend uh, from uh, the classroom, Ron Nolan. Ron, go ahead and unmute and come on in. Hi, Gary. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. Great. My name's Ron Nolan. I'm over in Marietta, South Carolina, uh, on the side of the hill. Uh, we're in the foothills over here. And... Uh, that was in one of Gary's classes a long, not a real long time ago, but a couple of years ago, or a year ago. And I took the general class, but didn't quite make it. So I'm back again to try to, to uh, get through. Um, I will share with everyone here, I would like to share with everyone here, that if you're in Gary's class and you listen to what he says and watch Dave, especially with his calculator, his magic calculator, my gosh, that thing's amazing. Uh, you'll make it through the class. I got distracted and I didn't make it, but I'm back again and I have the privilege of being in Gary's class one more time. Thank that's you so much, Gary, for allowing us all to participate. Today. Oh, you bet, Ron. And there's a magic three letter word yet. You haven't made it yet, but you will. I knew that. I was just testing. <laughs> <laughs> you passed. All right. <laughs> Sean Holmes, Kilo Oscar four, Mike Uniform Alpha, please unmute and come on in. Oops, maybe he's, you know, we're not hearing anything. And we have so many people on my participants list, I can't look to the top. All right, how about now? Okay, we got you now, yay. All right, uh, so I'm Sean Holmes, uh, KO4MUA. Um, live over here in uh, wonderful Dalton, Georgia. Um, Got interested in him back in, it's actually 1993 uh, time frame. Uh, anybody that lives in the southeast area is very familiar with uh, March of 93. Had a major blizzard through here, but had a friend in school. He was uh, studying his uh, Morse code stuff, and I, I thought about ham, and, but then I kicked it down the road, but about five years ago, I got interested again, never really moved forward with it until the first of this year. Um, found Gary's class online. I was looking for a way to get into a class. Nobody's doing in-person classes. And just by doing, uh, doing a search, came across uh, Gary's uh, technician class, started watching it, and February 20th, went and tested. Um, I have no idea what I made on the test. I didn't even ask. I just was happy to, to be, you know, completed with it. Um, currently working on a few projects right now. I've got uh, a tower that I purchased uh, at a ham fest two weeks ago here in Dalton. Luckily, my wife, she is, I did not think she would be supportive at first, but after the, uh, former AT&T employee blew up his RV in Nashville, took out cell service for everything just north of Dalton all the way up into Tennessee. It cut out phone communication between her and her mother. So her mom's neighbor is a ham and she's like, hey, that's absolutely perfect for me. She just don't know how much money I'm planning on spending. On this. <laughs> He 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, there's something in ham radio called the WAF. That's the wife acceptance factor. And you try to get that as high as you possibly can. So that, that's great. All right. Over to uh, Sunny Seal, uh, KI5NNL. Come on in. Gary, can you hear me? Yes, we hear you fine. Uh, well, my name is Sonny Seal, and uh, I'm a equine veterinarian in Garner, Texas. And I know so much about electronics that I've just learned to plug in my computer cord about a year ago. So uh, <laughs> I've basically avoided that type of stuff all my life and uh, had a couple of neighboring ranchers that were into or were getting into ham radio a couple of years ago. And when they finally got set up, uh, I was doing a little bit of research and I stumbled on your website somewhere. And uh, in December, I went ahead and over the course of about two weeks, took your uh, last year's technician class. Oh, did we lose Sonny? Sonny, your audio dropped out. Okay, well. <laughs> well, I'm in a bad bad internet area so uh, okay, i'll just back. listen if you can hear me we, we got you that time okay real good um yeah that's uh, something we have to pay attention to is our, our internet uh, connectivity issues so but glad to have you aboard glad you found us uh and um uh, so we'll, we'll get you through it here uh stefan or stephen um k kilo foxtrot oscar echo bravo kilo please come on in yeah this is stephen so uh, my wife let me buy a radio, and I was looking at the radio, realized I didn't know, it wasn't as intuitive as I thought it would be. <laughs> so uh, I started looking around to figure out how to take the test. I joined the Facebook club, and they recommended the ham quiz, the ham site, and we recommended finding this guy named Gary and watching his YouTube videos. So I did. Uh, I watched the technical YouTube video that you guys finished uh, earlier this year. And I went and took the test, passed it. Uh, tried to do the general. Uh, I don't know, I got like 22 out of it. So I didn't do so good there. 20, something like that. I forget what it, I failed. Um, <laughs> so I thought, well, I'll, I'll try it again. But... I emailed Gary, said, hey, I got the, you know, just from your YouTube videos, I was able to pass it, pretty excited about that. He said he was having this class, and I said, well, I might as well do this, because if watching the videos uh, was good, then doing it live should be better, right? I didn't have the book or anything for the first one, so now I got the book and everything, so. Um, but that's the radio I bought, I put it in the chat, and I'm still trying to figure out the best way to set it up with, with equipment. I don't. Not really sure how to do it yet. I'm not sure what I want to do yet. Because I want to make it portable, but I want to be able to use it in the house and mobile. And uh, I'm just not really sure which what direction to go. So hopefully this will help me with that too. Very good. Sure. It's a Yesu. What was the model number? Uh, FTM 7250DR. Okay. Very good. All right. So if anybody's got experience with that radio, um, you can get in touch uh, with uh, Stephen, please. So. Uh, Tim, yes. what a great call. Kilo 3, Victor Foxtrot Oscar, variable frequency oscillator. Yeah, so a little story there. So uh, I am um, I originally started my uh, electronics life in the Air Force. Um, so my tech school in the Air Force was all electronics and gave me a pretty good uh, start in 1987. Um, I did the, I think it was the five words per minute Morse test and got a novice license KA3 SLD. Buddy of mine in Frederick, Maryland, I I was SLD, he was SLE. Um, and then, yeah, like everybody else, life happened, kids came along, and I paid no attention. Um, the license expired, I lost hearing in my right ear and lost an interest for um, Morse code <clears throat> because hearing is sometimes a challenge. And so I found your channel uh, about halfway through your tech course last year. And so I soaked all of those up, did the tech book uh, cover to cover, and then looked around for a local place to test because online testing is an utter pain in the neck. 
um, like, yes, I can't even use a mouse on a laptop because I might have notes on the bottom of a mouse. And I did not make that up. Um, that was what was told to me. So I found a, a place in, in Pennsylvania about an hour north of me, and it was the president of the ham club up there. And he says, I, I called him about mid-January, and he says, you know what you ought to try because you got nothing to lose? Let's see if you can do a twofer. So off to the general book I went and studied and uh, passed both uh, – and got tech and general on the 17th, and then that of February, and then that license uh, call sign that I just wrote tonight was awarded today as the vanity <laughs> call sign of choice. Well, like I say, that's a fine business call. That's that's great. Uh, it's memorable, and people, yes. uh, you know, can can associate with it. So that that's great. Well, glad to have you aboard here, and um, we'll. Uh, we don't Thank have you. to get you licensed or upgraded, but no. Uh, but this is this is, in all honesty, this is to go through the foundation and really understand things better. I have a decent background, but this also was an exercise for everybody in the audience that, with enough time, you really can memorize 450 <laughs> questions and pass a test. Well, yeah, and so we want you to get the right answers, but we also yes. want you to know why they're the right answers. Yes, so. yes, yes. <laughs> so. Perfect. Great, Tim. Thank you so much. All right, my friend from New York City, Victor G., come on in. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes, we hear you okay. fine. Okay, 71, uh, I took the tech class with Gary last year, although they're not giving tests here in Brooklyn, New York at the moment. So I have a lot of patience and money to wait. So I figured in the meantime, let me study for the general and do both at the same time. Um, I, I, I retired from New York City Transit here in New York and my electronics goes back to 1963. That's when I first started to get involved in electronics. So I guess I do have an edge. Uh, my interests are working Wall Street, uh, doing HT and uh, Designing it and it's hopefully to build them at one time or another. The fact that I have limited space here in Brooklyn. Um, and basically, it's a hobby just to keep in touch with, with everybody. I love to make friends. That's about it, Gary. Great to see you again, Victor. And yeah, when we complain about the size of our yards and you know, how we can't get antennas up and whatnot, think about it. <laughs> <laughs> in the big city. Whoa. All right. And uh, well, my limited space, Gary, is a three and a half room apartment. Yeah. 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 Uh, as far as outdoor antenna, I have to talk with a few people. Yeah. But it can be done. But yeah, it's it, it's going to take some finagling. Well, glad to have you with us uh, tonight again. So uh, William KD2 GIP. I can't read my own writing. Um, William, come on in. <clears throat> Good evening, Gary and everybody else. Uh, well, my background is not electronics at all. Uh, I got into ham, got my license about four years ago, but my radio and my license sat on a shelf until last year when I got sick and I needed something to do because I couldn't go out. Uh, and I put the antenna out on my air conditioner, hooked it up and started talking to people. And uh, how I got into the uh, hobby is my friend in California got me interested. So uh, that's how I got. It. And also my girlfriend took your class, I believe last year, the end of last year. My name is Janet. And, uh, you know, she took the class and she egged me on to get my general license. So I'm going to get my general and try to get in touch with my friend in California. And that's where I am right now. Very good. Well, William, welcome aboard. And please say hello to Janet uh, from us as well. All right, I'm going to circle back, as uh, someone has <laughs> want to say uh, recently. Um, Gary Pizik, uh, come on in. Go ahead and hit unmute and tell us uh, where you are and why you're here. <laughs> All right, I'm Gary. Uh, I live in Greer, South Carolina, and uh, I got my tech license about a year ago, and uh, I want to upgrade to general so I can 
do more and talk to more, talk more, more frequencies. And um, so there I am. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, glad to have you aboard. Um, and uh, Jackie W, did you want to try to uh, say hello? I don't, where'd she go? She's still there. And you have to unmute. Did you find the unmute button? Uh, nope, it's not unmuted yet. It's in the Zoom software. Usually lower left-hand corner. She's got a new computer. <laughs> and it's, it's causing some issues. Okay, Jackie, well, we're going to have you do it again. Uh, maybe introduce yourself next week. Um, if we if we get there okay fine did i forget anybody did i leave anybody out i saw bernard uh, g checked in but now he's checked out again so um if you if i did not get to you just go ahead and unmute and say hey all right i think we got everybody great to have you here 27 people in the classroom this is the largest class we've ever attempted um, and we're new at this so we're not experts uh, n neither Dave nor myself are teachers uh, by profession um, so uh, we're making this up as we go along but we are nerds though so we were able to put together the TV studio so uh, anyway we'll we'll do our best all right let's uh, quickly get over to um, the PowerPoint presentation uh, probably take about 10 minutes here um, and uh, then we'll take a break and then Dave will come back and, and uh, give you uh, some more information that I think you'll find fascinating. So you heard a bunch of reasons uh, for upgrading tonight. Um, emergencies um, are one of those. You know, here's a hurricane emergency. Uh, somebody talked about the heavy snowfall. Um, when all else fails, amateur radio tends to get through. Uh, and, and so that's a, it's a good thing to have in your back pocket. Um, I mentioned I worked for The Voice of America, and my first overseas assignment was to Liberia, West Africa. And I was licensed there as Echo Lima 2 Delta Bravo. That was my Liberian call sign. And uh, we had a Voice of America transmitting station upcountry from Monrovia, right about in there at uh, Carysburg. Uh, and we had uh, over 2,000 acres of uh, shortwave antennas um, and a big transmitter hall. Uh, in the middle with 250,000 watt shortwave transmitters uh, and we received programming from Washington DC and rebroadcast it on uh, shortwave frequencies. That was my first overseas assignment and less than a year into the tour at uh, Christmas time this guy happened. Charles Taylor, rebel leader uh, who decided that he wanted to take over the country from uh, the then president Samuel Doe and so he and his merry band of rebels marched in from um, Cote d'Ivoire, the Ivory Coast, heading toward Monrovia. And the phone system in Liberia was erratic. Um, you couldn't count on it. And so I had a daily ham radio schedule with the station manager at the Greenville, North Carolina transmitting station, Jack Moss. Uh, and so Jack and I would talk every night uh, and it was just kind of one of those things that, okay, we heard from Gary, everything's still okay. Uh, we didn't talk business. It was just to let them know that uh, everybody was fine and everybody was safe. So that was my emergency uh, and uh, eventually was evacuated from there. Eventually, um, the, the government fell, never went back. Um, and uh, so all of the transmitting station and whatnot you saw there is all lost, uh, your tax dollars at work. But um, regular communications would have been impossible without high-frequency radio, and it's the general class that gives you access to the HF uh, frequencies. Uh, so more frequencies, more communication modes uh, that are active uh, in the lower bands, um, new technical opportunities uh, for you to build larger antennas, so maybe uh, um, some, some things uh, to play with. It's more fun, though, too. When you get up on the HF bands, you, it's really thrilling to put a station together and then talk to someone in Africa, for example, point to point, station to station. Uh, uh, that's really fascinating. So my primary reason for you to upgrade to the general class is so you can get on 20 meters. The 20 meter band, I think, is 14 megahertz, is the, probably the best amateur radio band out there 
for long distance communications. It's open to somewhere pretty much 24 hours a day. Now, Dave may refute this, but um, I think Dave's reason is that you can get on FT8 and FT4. Uh, FT4 is a contest mode, but FT8 is a digital radio mode where you don't actually have to talk into a microphone, but you can make contacts with other stations all around the world. It's a lot of fun, and I even came over to the dark side, and I even operate FT8 now. So, <laughs> To qualify for a general class license, you must pass Elements 2, the technician license, and Elements 3. Element 1 in the FCC was the Morse code test, which is no longer required. A technician who is licensed before, let me just turn on my, my pointer here. So a technician licensed before March 21st, 87, you can upgrade to general by just going to a test session uh, with proof of being licensed before that date. Um, if someone has an expired license, um, a general class license may be renewed after just passing the technician test. Uh, Morse code is alive and well, although it's no longer required. Um, and we recommend uh, a couple ways if you wanted to study for Morse code. Uh, the CW Ops Group, the CW Operators Club, is an excellent um, Morse code educational organization. But if you don't want to get involved in a group, we have Morse code training classes on video on my YouTube channel, the W4EEY YouTube channel. So go take a look for that. Ninth edition. License manual. This is the book that we'll be using. We talked about that before. Um, we're going to cover one chapter each week with the exception of chapter four. Chapter four has so much information in it that we've divided it in half. And I assigned it to Dave to teach. I'm no dummy. So chapter four will go over two weeks. Um, chapter one tonight, uh, this is an introduction. There are no test questions from chapter one from your book. Uh, but it has good information, especially about how to use the book uh, to your best advantage. Um, for next week, we're going to ask you please to read chapter two. Uh, it's really important for you to read ahead uh, so that then you might have questions that you can ask us um, when we uh, have class time. We only have two hours uh, every week, um, so uh, that's you know really important uh, that uh, you be uh, as prepared as possible. So this is the class schedule, and oh, by the way, you will receive a copy of this PowerPoint presentation as a PDF in an email that I'll be sending out tomorrow um, sometime to you, um, so you'll, you'll get a chance to see this. But th these are the scheduled classes. We are scheduled to finish in May, on May the 11th. Um, and so the, the, the finish line is in May. Now, you can always test before May. But at least be thinking about where you can test uh, and when uh, in May. Um, a test, it's a multiple choice test that you'd be taking, 35 questions. You need to get 26 right in order to pass. There's a question pool of, I looked uh, yesterday on the ARRL site, of 453 questions. We will talk about all of them here in class. And we're also going to provide you with something I call the Right Answers Study Guide, uh, which goes chapter by chapter and gives you just the test question and just the right answer. Some people like to study this way, um, and so we're going to provide that to you, uh, whatever works for you. But like I say, we're going to end up in May, so be thinking now where you're going to take your test and when. And if you have a definite goal in mind, uh, then that will help motivate you. So somebody mentioned online testing. It is possible to take the test online. Some of the organizations are a little difficult. You can't use a calculator. You can only use the calculator built into your computer. You can't use scratch paper. Um, you have to pan your camera all around the room to make them see that there's nobody else in there feeding you the answers. Uh, okay. It's better maybe if you can find a ham club in your area uh, to take the test. But there are, here are three online organizations that are testing. The uh, Greater Los Angeles Amateur Radio Group, and no matter where you are, you can take the test uh, with this group. The uh, New England Amateur Radio Group, uh, and there's a URL here that you can uh, look up on there. And then one of the first uh, folks that got into this was the Anchorage, Alaska, 
volunteer exam coordinator group. Uh, and so this is their, their website. So all three of these organizations, and there are probably more, uh, are giving online amateur radio tests. And you can find um, a complete list of test sessions, both, both locally and online, at hamstudy.org stroke sessions. hamstudy.org stroke sessions. Um, so uh, maybe not something you have to worry about today, but as we get closer to the end of the class, you're definitely going to want to go back and, and, and look into this. So you are the key to your success. Uh, all of the necessary info um, that you uh, require to pass the test will be in the class, but your motivation is the secret ingredient. If you want your license, you're going to get it, absolutely. So um, this is kind of a, uh, we said to bring your book and something to take notes in. Well, you don't have to bring anything because you're already home, <laughs> but uh, have your book and a scientific uh, calculator. We recommend this one, the Texas Instruments Model 36X Pro. Uh, Dave will uh, tell you more about those, and we actually give you keystroke by keystroke um, instructions on how to do math problems using this calculator. Of course, you can use anything you want, um, but uh, the instruction we're going to give you will be based on this calculator. But the, don't worry, there are no really heavy math problems uh, in the class. You can, you can get through it. If you don't already, I recommend you uh, set up a free account. Um, at the American Radio Relay League's uh, exam review website uh, right here. It's free, uh, and um, you can then take a test, sample tests there. You can also review test questions on a chapter-by-chapter -chapter basis corresponding to the book. Um, so, um, and it's free. Did I mention that? So, yeah, that's a good one. You can also use apps on your phone uh, or other websites. Uh, I'll send you more information about some of those. Uh, as long as they're using the current question pool, uh, the one that is valid right now, then, then you're good to go. Before each class, we're going to send you links to videos from Dave Kassler, K-E-0-O-G. Dave, I kind of liken to the grandfather of uh, ham radio uh, class uh, testing or, or license testing, uh, license instruction. Yep. Um, but Dave does a great job introducing the material and our job is then to flesh it out uh, and to talk about all of the, the questions. Um, each week after class, I said we'll send you a PDF of the PowerPoint. And also remember that all of the classes are recorded on YouTube uh, for later viewing. Uh, so that uh, if you miss a class, you don't have to quit. Just go watch the class on YouTube and then catch up uh, the very next time. Um, Everyone's email address is in the clear when I send an email out. So you are a team. You are a learning team. And so if you gel with somebody else here in the classroom, send them an email and say, hey, what was he talking about? I didn't understand. And, and you can work together. Uh, and, and that would be very helpful for you. Um, look into maybe finding a local ham club. Uh, here in the Greenville, South Carolina area, there's the Blue Ridge Amateur Radio Society and there's the Greer Amateur Radio Club. Both meet monthly. Uh, they're both doing virtual meetings right now, but hopefully they'll get back into uh, a physical meeting here pretty soon. Uh, if you're at another location, you can use the American Radio Relay League's Find a Club uh, web page here and put in your uh, zip code and uh, find the ham clubs that are near to you. Always remember that after you take the class and pass your exam, you don't know everything. In fact, you've just scratched the surface. A ham ticket is a license to learn, and the real learning starts after you start to get on the air. And that's, we want you to get on the air. We also encourage you to join the American Radio Relay League. They're the people that uh, publish the book that we're using. Uh, their QST magazine is the American uh, Bible um, for amateur radio, so uh, highly recommended. If you don't already have a high-frequency uh, receiver, uh, you might want to look into getting one and, and setting up at least a listening station. Listening to the ham bands can make what we discuss real. But you don't actually have to buy anything anymore. There are online software-defined radios. So with your computer, going to these websites and uh, pushing a, a few uh, mouse clicks, you can actually start listening to the amateur radio bands for free. 
and so it's highly recommended to to hear what uh, uh, things are going on i'm going to alert you to uh, contest weekends uh, when contests are coming up they're always fun uh, to listen to uh, the cq worldwide wpx contest is coming up uh, at the uh, end of this month uh, and that's one of the the bigger single sideband phone uh, contests um, try to relate what we talk about here with what you hear on the air and then bring questions back to the class so welcome to the best hobby in the world ham radio uh, the motto is always to have fun and learn something new so for next week watch for emails uh, for me uh, and or Dave and uh, watch the suggested Dave Kassler videos read uh, chapter 2 if you haven't already read chapter 1 go ahead and do that and come to class next week ready to learn and for those who might be on uh, YouTube watching us uh, and uh, would like to receive the email information just send me an email at w4eey at arrl net say hey I want to be part of your YouTube mailing list uh, and we'll uh, add you to that so 730 made it okay it's going to be over to Dave but first we're going to take about a five minute break Thank you so much for your attention, and uh, Dave's going to give you some information when we return.
Okay, well, we're back from our break, and uh, you might notice that uh, Gary and I switched places. So <laughs> that's a good thing. Your eyes are not deceiving you. I'm going to go through about a half hour of material here on math, kind of a preview, and some study tips that I think you're going to find very, very helpful. You'll notice that I normally put my contact information on the first slide, and we don't, um, we're, we're very willing to take questions, uh, even, even phone calls. Might be a day or two before we get back to you, but uh, we're, we're here for you as we go along. Just a couple of general things. Um, Gary mentioned the YouTube folks. Uh, I saw that we had about 25 people on YouTube, and please let us know that you're watching if you want to be on our YouTube e mailing list. That way you'll get all of the information that we send out every week, like the links to Castler and, and those sorts of things. So let us know you're watching. So since we're going to be involved with some math here, I thought I should put up some mystery numbers here. And Gary has already mentioned some of these things already, but let's just see if you can remember any of them. Does 453 mean anything to you? you can go ahead and unmute and give us an that answer. Pool? That's the number of questions in the question pool. Exactly. That's quite a few. 10. Does that ring any bells? Well, we're going to be, uh, that's the number of chapters in the book, and that's the number of weeks that we're going to be meeting here. So that's significant. And 35, I kind of jumped ahead there, but that's the number of questions on the test. Questions, yeah. Yep, and what, what's the significance of 26 and 9? Yes, fail. Right, you need to get 26 right out of the 35, which means you can get up to 9 wrong. And then 90% plus, that's the percentage of students that typically pass this. It's usually plus plus, except when we were in COVID, it was a little bit more difficult. So those, those are the mystery numbers. What are our objectives here? We want to give you the confidence, especially to pass the math questions on the exam, because that's what worries people the most, it seems. Then we want to provide enough context and background so that, as Gary mentioned, you'll know why the right answers are the right answers. Plus, that helps you to remember them when you get to them on the test, if you know a little, little bit about the subject matter. And then we want to help you become a better learner, which is the uh, second part of what I'm going to be talking about here tonight. That'll help not only you, but your whole family. You take some of these suggestions to heart. So we've got some assumptions about you. We've already kind of talked about us a little bit and done the introductions. Math may have discouraged you from taking the general exam sooner. If anybody is like that, just kind of wave your hand at us. Okay, well, no, okay, all right, we've got one. The study uh, questions, the, or the pool questions, can be perceived as intimidating, especially in Chapter 4, which is why we're taking two, two weeks for that. We're making the assumption that you are not an electrical engineer. That should be a great relief to most of you. Yes, see some hands waving. And uh, we, not only are you not an electrical engineer, but you don't want to become one. We're also making that assumption. We're going to assume that you've been exposed to some kind of algebra. It might have been 100 years ago, back when you were in high school. Yep. And th that's fine. You'll find that our formulas uh, that are needed to answer some of the pool questions are pretty much what we call plug and play or plug and chug. Once you see the formula, the numbers just go straight into it. You don't need to do any algebraic uh, manipulation, but it is helpful to know what a formula looks like. So that was the reason for that statement. We assume that you have a desire to pass the general. We had some very good comments during the introductions there that was very encouraging to us as instructors. Your license is a license to learn. It's your, your tech license and all of your licenses and a willingness to try. Some of this is going to feel a little bit tough, but if, if you'll give it your best, we'll definitely be able to help you through it. Now there's learning preferences, and I want you to listen to these descriptions and, and just mentally um, ask yourself uh, which, which one of these might I be. The visual learners tend to work well with visual guides and models. Show me on, on a blackboard or whiteboard. Um, that, that's how I prefer to learn. 
The next is auditory, what's oral communications and written language. Tell me what I need to know or give me a book. That's kind of where I fall into the uh, spectrum here. If you give me a book, I'll figure it out. And then kinesthetic, long word, but that just means learn best by doing. So if you've got those as options, uh, how many people just by raise or wave your hand would consider yourself visual learners? Okay, we've got 20-30% uh, auditory or book. Go ahead and raise a hand. Some of those, okay, good. And then you have to learn by doing. All right, so we've got kind of a smattering across the board. The good news is that we try to address all of those learning preferences in our materials. Um, now, you don't necessarily learn best if you only uh, get information presented in that format, but everybody has a preference. So we're going to try to help you out there. Now, our success plan, uh, as Gary mentioned, we really have to focus on the pool questions. There's entire college semesters behind a lot of the material that we're going to be touching on. And of course, we don't have time to get into that. Need to understand how to work the formulas. And we will work through all of the exam pool questions. In some cases, questions are just variations on one another, especially some of the math ones. But we'll do at least one of each type to prepare you. In our tool set, we've got the general class license manual, which hopefully you've all got by now the calculator. I'm going to be sharing what's called a general class reference sheet that will have all of the formulas and it's on one page. So it won't be nearly as intimidating as chapter four makes it look in the book. And then we'll be supplying some supplemental links in our emails. The practice problems will be primarily the pool problems. I'd like to have you work those on your own after you see how to do it. And then there's, there's a mindset. The con concept of mindset is interesting. Uh, there's what's called a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. A fixed mindset says that you were born with all the brains you're ever going to have and you can't learn any more than you already know. Um, that's kind of the, the negative. The positive uh, uh, mindset is that you can grow, you can learn. If you apply yourself, you can learn new things and you can succeed at anything you apply yourself to. And that's, that's the mindset that we need to have here. And I can do this, is the motto. There's a concept that I found very helpful called the memory dump sheet. And I learned about this in studying for my project management professional exam, and one of the instructors. And this is the concept, this is optional, don't have to do this, but you might find it helpful, others have. You create it, it's no more than one page and you write down facts and formulas that you think you might need and, and forget. In other words, I'm going to pay extra attention that I don't forget this particular item, so I'm going to put it on my sheet. Unit values and conversions if you need them. And then the idea is you commit your memory dump sheet to memory and then reproduce it before you uh, begin your exam. Now, if you're taking an in-person exam, you can use the back side of your answer sheet as scratch paper, and that would be a good place to put these notes down. If you're doing an online exam, you'll have to talk to the VEC organization that's conducting your exam to find out what you're allowed to do. Because as somebody mentioned, um, you may not be able to use scratch paper uh, or even move a physical mouse. So. Uh, that's a good reason why you'd prefer to take it in person. But um, so this, this strategy may not work if, if you don't have that option. The calculator. This calculator, we spent quite a bit of time researching the field here. There's some questions in the extra exam that require trigonometry and ma manipulation of complex numbers. This calculator eliminates the need for most of that pain. And because we need a scientific calculator for the general, our recommendation is to go ahead and get this one now because it'll do everything that you need for your general and you can roll right into the extra with it. Doesn't cost too much, about $25. They're available at Staples and uh, Amazon. And uh, it, it will serve you well going forward. 
All of the examples that we use in this class will be uh, shown on, on this calculator. And I've got a number of how-to guides. They're actually step-by-step -step procedures for some of the problems and they'll be based on keystrokes using this calculator. The, if you're doing an in-person exam, you can use this calculator during the exam. Uh, some VECs will ask you to clear the memory first, just to be sure that there's nothing in it, but this calculator doesn't store formulas, so that, that's why it's allowed. And because our class time is limited, we won't really be able to take the time to figure out other brands of calculators, although I will be happy to work with anybody offline if, if you choose to use something other than this calculator. So learning tools and techniques. Now this, this is a general area that uh, I, I think you'll find to be very eye-opening. Now I first learned about this uh, sequence of understanding at Ham, uh, Hamcation in February of 2019. There was a fellow there, Michael Burnett, who has also written a number of ham study books. We're using the ARRL, so we're, we're not using his materials, but I have to give him credit for waking me up to the existence of some of these resources. So there's a, uh, a link here that'll get, get you to this book. It's available. You, you can tell when I really, really like a book because I wind up getting it in all formats, print, audiobook, and, and Kindle. And this, this is one that I uh, have in all formats. I wouldn't necessarily recommend this book. Um, there's another one. Barbara Oakley is the author. But she wrote one um, called Learning How to Learn. And this was really intended for uh, teen, kids and teens, but it's in color. Um, and it was uh, th there's a, a, a specialist that was brought in on, on their team to write the book. And this is so much easier to read. It's actually fun. So if, if you want to delve into this, I'd actually recommend buying this book. It's the same author, the same material. It's just a lot more fun to read. But if you prefer the adult version, <laughs> there you go. The simplified one is here, and I, I find this every bit as, as useful. This, this would be a great one not only for you to read, be a great one for your kids to read, be a great one for your grandkids to read. It'll really help them in their, in their work, schoolwork of any kind. Of course, I got steered onto it for learning ham radio license upgrade material. Excellent for that. Houston, we have a problem. This, is, um, this is, can get us in really big trouble. Our class is going to run over 10 weeks. And if you don't do anything about the problem, when we get to week 10, you're going to forget everything that you learned in week 2 and 3. So this is called the forgetting curve. When you first hear something new, you may be lucky enough to have retained it all. But at the end of one day, you can see that you're way down to like 50%. You've forgotten half of what you heard the day before. And a week out, you're way below 20%. And this is common to, uh, to our race, okay? We, everybody has got this issue. So what are we going to do? Well, it's, uh, th there's some analogies here. Learning is like stringing cranberries without a knot. People used to uh, decorate their trees with cranberry strings, and if there's not a knot on the end of the string, cranberries just fall off. It's like the knowledge that you're gaining uh, just, just won't stick. Or another analogy is like pouring water into a leaky bucket. You're pouring all of this knowledge in, but it's, it's leaking out almost as fast as you're taking it in. So I've got an analogy that I, I thought was kind of fun. fun called the magic plant analogy. So you all have a favorite fruit of some kind. I just picked a pineapple here. And our magic plant is going to produce in 11 weeks. Of course, that's not realistic for a pineapple, but just, just pretend. Now, in 11 weeks, we're going to be through this class. 10 gallons of water will be needed, spread evenly over the time period. But unfortunately, we have a leaky container called our brain. So what can we do? Well, first of all, 11 weeks, that's when we're going to be ready to go out and pass our exam because it'll be 
10, 10 weeks of classes. That's the fruit that we, we want to be able to harvest. The amount of knowledge needed is the water. Okay, we've got 10 chapters that we're going to be going through. But our learning is leaking. So what can we do, is the question. Well, we have to interrupt the forgetting process. That, that's a key concept. If we can somehow interrupt the forgetting process, maybe we'll have enough at the end of the 10 weeks to pass our test. So what actions can we take? Well, we can plug the leaks where possible, and we can relearn where needed. And I'll have some specific strategies to help with that. There's some strategies that work as people try to learn, get ready to pass a test, and there's strategies that are not effective and some of this is very counterintuitive. So strategies that work. Um, first of all, handwritten notes. If you can scribble things down while you're reading your book, um, that would be terrific. People have found that if you're taking notes on a computer, you can almost capture verbatim what's being said. If you're taking notes by hand, you are forced to rephrase the information that you have taken in you have to pass it through your mind and write it down in a slightly different form than you heard it. That really helps it to stick. So restate the main points in your own words. Create analogies that make sense to you. This can be very, very powerful. Memory mnemonics and cues. There's some memory tricks that we'll be using throughout the class that will help you in this area. These are strategies that, that can definitely help you here. Spaced repetition. This graph is probably a little bit small, but uh, the, the trouble is when you learn something new, you start forgetting it. These are forgetting curves here. But if you repeat that information a day later, there's something magic that happens when you go to sleep. Your brain sorts out the things that you've learned that day and categorizes them and they, they tend to stick. If, and then if you can recall that information a day later, and then three days later, notice that the time is getting longer and longer, you're going to keep uh, flattening out that forgetting curve. That's called spaced repetition. And how can we do that? You're probably wondering, well, the, the test site that Gary mentioned, you can go back and review uh, section 2.1. It's actually arranged so you, you can do an entire chapter, you can do section 2.1, 2.2, and review those after the class, preferably a day later and then a couple days after that, to fight this uh, loss of, of information. <clears throat> Self-testing as a recall mechanism is extremely powerful. And again, this, the same tools, these uh, self-test sites, the trick is to learn the material first and then see if you can recall it. And it'll give you a realistic view of if you really know it or not. It might make all kinds of sense when you hear it during the class, but when you try to regurgitate it, you'll find that it's not there. And this is how you can tell if you've got it or not. And then accept that permanent learning takes time. It'll take more than once through some of this stuff in order for you to get it. And the three that are absolutely critical are the ones in the, in the box here. Spaced repetition, use self-testing, repeated self-testing, and accept that it's going to take some time. Now, I'm, I mentioned that sleeping on it and then recalling is a form of spaced repetition. And this is what you want, a brick wall of learning. In other words, you're going to come up, come up against your test and you, you're just sure that everything is there. And not this. This kind of gets to the old college trick of staying up 20, of goofing off all semester, staying up all night the night before, and hoping that you remember something, remember enough to pass your exam the next day. What? Never. Never, never. Nobody would even think of that. But this is what it looks like, if that's your strategy. Now, illusions of competence, this is also brought out in Barbara Oakley's book, and this, this was all new to me, and just absolutely fascinating. 
repeated reading. Some people think that if you read a paragraph over and over and over again, it'll stick. What really happens is past probably the first time that you read it, you, you look at the words and say, oh, I already know that, and, and you just skip over it, and it, it won't sink in. So repeated reading is not a good strategy. It's an illusion of competence. You're doing something, but it's not doing you much good. Highlighting almost everything. Now, highlighting is a good thing if you just highlight the main points as you're going through. Uh, but if, if you turn the entire page yellow, you're doing a lot of activity, but you're really not doing any learning or very little. Logic of classroom explanations. We're going to take you through some math problems and problem solutions, and you're going to watch us do that. And we've done this a few times now, so you know we will. It, it'll be fairly, fairly clear when we talk about it. And you say, "Oh, okay, I understand that. I've got it." But when you, uh, the next day or perhaps on your test, try to reproduce that, you'll find that you're like a boat without a paddle. You'll, and um, it, you'll struggle. So even though it makes sense in class, that has to be reviewed in order to make it stick. Some people will do repeated practice tests before really knowing the information in its context. I have a really good friend who wanted to become uh, licensed as, as an amateur, and he spent an entire year doing nothing but practice tests. And a year later, he aced his tech, general, and, and extra. Well, okay, that, that's a strategy, but you know what he knew about radio? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> so that's, that's the reason that um, the practice tests are, are good to test your understanding, but um, they should be done after you've been through the material and understand a little bit about its context. Of course, cramming before the exam, we talked about that strategy as not being effective. So all of these things are illusions of competence you think you're getting it, but it really isn't getting into long-term memory, and you'll have trouble recalling it. Oop, skip. Now, there's uh, another concept that I want to bring up here called focus versus diffuse mode. If you can imagine having a problem that you're working on, that's uh, over here. Let's say that your car won't start. You're really struggling to, to solve that problem. Well you're going to be uh, limiting what you know to a fairly small part of your brain and you might be stuck because the answer is someplace else. That's the focus mode. You're, you're highly focused on solving a problem or a math problem or a ham radio problem. The diffuse mode is very different. This mode, uh, the thought gets launched and it bounces all over your brain. Now when you're focused, that you're, it's a very, very tight uh, attention on one particular item. When you can forget about that for a little while, come back the next day or an hour later, you may find that the answer is, is right there. It's like an aha moment. The interesting thing here is the focus and diffuse mode are mutually exclusive. When you're in the focus mode, you can't see all of this other stuff. When you can forget about that problem, your entire brain can work on it. So that's, that's the concept. So here, here's a, a tip. Um, when you're reading a chapter, read recreationally first, then again for understanding. It's also called a picture walk. What that means is read the summary first. Go to the end of the chapter and read the summary. Then look at, go back and look at all of the titles and headings. Look at the pictures. Don't try to understand it. That's the concept of a picture walk. Then when you go through the chapter or the material slowly, a lot of that stuff will start clicking into place because you're planting seeds, and then the next time through, you're watering those seeds. And here, here's a method to apply focus and diffuse called the Pomodoro Technique. I've got a slide on that coming up. 25 minutes of intense focused study. Get rid of all distractions. Then do anything else to disconnect when you're disconnected, the brain will continue to work in diffuse mode. And when you come back to focus mode later, you might have an entirely different uh, perspective on, on the issue you were working on. And then have, have you ever had an aha experience? That's where you're really struggling. And then the next morning you get up and it's an aha. I understand it now. How could I have been, how could I have missed that? Because your brain figured it out for you. 
a little bit more on the technique. Pomodoro is Italian for tomato. The person who uh, documented all of this actually had a, a, a timer in his drawer that he used. That's uh, where, where the tomato and the pomodoro came from. And the, the method, eliminate distractions, set the timer for 25 minutes. For some people, uh, some music helps that this is very helpful to me. You might have heard of the Mozart effect, which is somewhat controversial whether that's a real thing or not, but I, I find that the music relaxes me, helps me to learn better. Then blitz, study as hard as you possibly can during that 25 minutes. Get rid of distractions. It's a, this is also a method of uh, fighting procrastination because you're totally focused. And then disconnect completely. Take a walk, exercise, take a nap, do anything that's different, or maybe study an unrelated area. Thomas, and, Thomas Edison had a very uh, unique technique. He'd be struggling with a problem, and he had a chair that he'd like to sit in and take a nap. And he'd hold a ball bearing or some keys in his hand, and guess what would happen when he'd start to fall asleep? The keys would drop and hit the floor and, and make a rattling noise and wake him up. Okay, he just went from focus mode into diffuse mode, and when he woke up, He'd write down any insights that he got as a result of going through this process. So it, it's very much in line with what we're talking about here. I thought that was pretty humorous and uh, interesting. So in, in other additional learning techniques, uh, links that you can make to similar concepts really help because it, when you're introduced to material that's new, you've never heard it before, it, it's really tough to connect that uh, to anything and, and make it stick. Analogies and related knowledge uh, can help a great deal there. So link it to something that you already know and you'll see as we go through this class we'll be doing that continuously, tying things together for you. People have preferences of learning styles. Um, why not try all three if you're not used to using one or another? That this can be helpful and engage all possible uh, senses. You can imagine the concept, tell yourself a story about it, draw pictures, try to explain it to another person. These are all things that will help cement it into your mind. It's often said that the person who learns the most is the one that's trying to teach it. I have certainly found that to be true in, in, in my case. Amen. Yep. Here's an interesting um, quote from uh, Dawson Trotman. I don't know much about him, but his quote, thoughts disentangle themselves when they pass through the lips and the fingertips. Well, when you take handwritten notes, those thoughts have to be clarified in order for you to make the words. If you try to explain a concept to somebody else, that will help you clarify it and, and learn it better. So thoughts disentangle themselves when they pass through the lips and the fingertips. Now, there's a fairly smart guy, some of you might have heard of him, Albert Einstein, and he's credited with saying, if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. And I, I thought that that was great as, as well. If you can explain something to somebody else, um, you're gonna understand it better. And as Gary mentioned, you've got email addresses for our entire class. Give, give that a try. So here's some learning techniques. Recall from memory without looking at the solution. So you're going to go through some of your practice tests and uh, it'll ask you a question. And what I would encourage you to do is to try to think about what you know about that question before you go and look it up. So read the question and discern what it is asking. Uh, I was in a class one time where they used the terms uh, RTDQ and RTDA. That's read the darn question, read the darn answer. You, you can substitute different words if you care to. So read the question, discern what it's asking, recall what you know about it before jumping uh, to, for any help on it. Draw a diagram, that may help. Recall from memory how to solve it and then solve it. If you get stuck, Go ahead and use your references as necessary. Come back and try it again another day and, and try to get through this without any helps. 
this will it is, is part of the, the recall process. It will really help you cement the stuff into your mind, build that solid brick wall. So between classes, we need to do spaced repetition, reviewing the material, use self-testing as a recall mechanism, and accept the fact that it's going to take some time. You're going to get it wrong the first time that you go and try to do it on your own. Uh, that's okay. Work through it, get it, and um, try again during another session. You want this versus this. So spaced repetition and testing are keys to getting this stuff. And then Michael Burnett, um, and we'll send this out as a handout, had a, a list of items, just as a reminder, for a refrigerator note, if you will. Commit to a date and stick to it. Gary mentioned, look, starting right now, when you can pick a testing date someplace. That'll help you be motivated to learn this stuff and be ready for your exam. Make a steady schedule and stick to it. And being committed to attend these sessions on Tuesday nights is, is a big part of that. If, if I know that the video is out there and I can look at it whenever I feel like it, guess what? I usually won't do it. <laughs> but being committed to a regular time and place will really help you. Study with a friend if that's possible. Read and recall. Engage lots of senses. Learn the material first, then do practice exams. Build your own context. In other words, link information to things that you already know. Take breaks. Learn more than necessary. And you're definitely going to see, you'll have this opportunity with both Dave Kastler's videos and the license manual that we're going through because there's more there than what you really need uh, to, to pass all of the pool questions. Don't put off the hard stuff. When it's time to learn it, apply yourself. And then this is interesting, get a solid night's sleep before the exam, because if you don't do number 11, the other 10 may not matter, because your brain may be mush when you go to take the exam. And we're going to have more fun next week. I'm going to have a little bit more. I'll, I'll be up next week going through Chapter 2. And then I'll, at, at the end of that session, we'll be talking some more about using the calculator and uh, a little bit more on learning, I expect. So I think these things will not only help you with your preparation for your upgrade exam, but they'll help you in, in life. And you can share these principles with uh, friends, colleagues, children, grandchildren, and make, make a difference in their life as well. And we'd be delighted if, if that will work for you. And that's all we have for tonight. So at this point in time, if everybody could unmute at the same time, Everybody on mute at the same time, and then, then raise your hands up like this, and, and, and then give yourself some applause for, for getting, through, getting through this session. And we will, see you, we will see you next week. Thank you so much for being part of this tonight. Bye, guys. Thank you. See ya. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Good job. Thank you, Gary. See you next week. Thank you very much.